Hello, so this video is going to do two things. First of all, it's going to walk you through one of your problems that are in Cengage, and it's going to show you what I am looking for in our Excel document that we're going to be using throughout the semester and then finally submitting at the end for a test grade. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is to click on to Cengage, and you'll find that link on your course um, right here. So it's the, that's the Cengage sign, and it's um, Advanced Taxation Fall 2019 Bergeron. So I click on that, and it should let you in with the trial, if, even if you haven't purchased your access code, and then it'll require you to purchase the access code soon. So we click on Assignments, and the one I want to work is in Chapter 2, so I'm going to click on Chapter 2. It will tell you to start your assignment now, and I'm going to scroll down to the, I think it's the second to the last problem that I actually want to work. All right, and so you will have done them probably in order because they um, start with the easier concepts and then progressively get harder. So it's helpful to start in order. But for this purpose, I wanted to go to one that would be challenging, so therefore helpful, hopefully, to you. Okay, so I like to split my screen or open up two windows and have Excel here. And just like we did in class, I like to write down my important information. But since this one is going to be the spreadsheet that you're going to be submitting, I'm going to take a little bit of time to format it and make it look nice. Now, I can do that on the back end or the front end, so whichever your preference. I'm going to go ahead and label my first sheet Chapter 1, because that's what I want you guys to do is have a sheet for each chapter. Oh, I said Chapter 1. This is Chapter 2. Okay. And then I'm going to um, make my first column bigger because I just know I'll need that kind of space. And I'm going to label this problem problem 2-26. And again, I just got that from uh, right here. All right, and then I'm going to take out the important information just like we did last night. So it's Scott and Laura, and so they are married. And of course, that's important because we'll be looking at our thresholds. All right, and it tells us that Scott has a sole proprietorship that's not a specified service business that reports net income of 300000 So that's already net income. So that will be our QBI of 300000 All right, the proprietorship pays W-2 wages. So I'll say that this is my W-2 wages of $40,000 and holds property with an unadjusted basis of $10,000. Right, Laura is employed by a local school district. Their taxable income before QBI deduction is $375. This is also their modified taxable income. The first question is, what is their tentative QBI based on the W-2 and wages capital investment limit? So let's just look and see. It looks like um, what we need to know, and I want you to put down the what you need to know um, as you're doing this. I'm going to go ahead and make commas because it makes it easier to read. All right, so what we need to know is that there is a threshold of 315000 and we are above that threshold at 375 but not all the way to that 415 number. Okay, so I'm just making a note of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is start off with QBI is 300,000 times 0 0.20, and that equals this. Then, because we're in the middle of our 375, but not all the way up to the um, 415, then I need to limit with the W-2. So I'm going to say W-2. And again, that was 40,000. And the first test is times 50%. So I do that one. And then it's or W2. And that one is going to be 40,000 times 0.25 greater. Uh, and then we can add um, the unadjusted basis test, which is. 10,000, oops, wrong button I'm pressing, times 0 0.025, and that is equal to that number. So I add these two, 
And then when I, I want to make a note for myself because I want to remember this when I go back and study um, that I am now looking for the lesser of 60,000 compared to the greater of either this or this. This is greater. So I'm just going to put this here so I can be thinking about that. And so I'll come down here and explain what I'm doing. I am taking the lesser of QBI times 20% or the greater of W2 compared to W2 capital investment. All right, and then I'm going to look back and I'm going to see if that makes sense. So I'm going to take the lesser of um, this compared to the greater of these, and this is the greater of. So it looks like I am being limited to, so initially I'm limited to $20,000. However, the taxable income is not exceeding 415000 Therefore, I can use the formula and just reduce my QBI by and you can look it up in a textbook if you don't remember, but it's by the difference in QBI times 20% and the W2 slash capital investment limitation. Okay, so what are we saying? All right, let's get that difference. So QBI times 20% is equal to 60,000. Okay, I got that from right here, so really I could do a formula. Got it from right there. And my limit Okay. I decided that the greater of these two limitations is 20, so that's it. So then I can say that the difference is that. All right. Then reduce my QBI by the formula. So what is that formula? All right, that formula is, let's see, taxable income less threshold amount divided by, for us it's 100,000 because these people are married. All right, so let's plug it in. So my taxable income is 375,000 minus my threshold of 315,000. I'm going to put that in parentheses because I'm about to divide. All right, so I get 60%. All right, so I'm going to multiply that by my difference that I just calculated right here. So I'm going to say my formula equals 60%, and I multiply that by this. I get 24,000. So I want to reduce. my QBI deduction, which would have been 60,000, but I need to reduce it by 24,000. So my whole deduction should be this number right here. And I'll go back and add the nice formatting um, after we check our work because we want to stay focused on what we're getting at right now. Okay, so what is the tentative QBI based on W-2 wages capital investment limit? So, um, if we had to have that limit, we would have been limited to $20,000. I'm going to check my work and see. All right. But because we were above 375 but below 415, we were able to just subtract out that ratio times by the difference and get to a QBI deduction of 36,000. We got to take in more of it. And I'm going to check my work there. And we got it correct. All right, so let's go back and make this neater because as we do that, it's going to do several things. First of all, it's going to give you practice in making your Excel look nice. Second of all, it is going to reinforce the concepts that you had to apply to this problem so that it wasn't just a one and done kind of problem and you'll remember it better. All right, so this was, I'm going to label this. This was the important information, wasn't it? So if we were looking at it, we'd know, okay, well, we were given all of this information. 
and then this was something that we needed to know. So threshold, um, the taxable income threshold for married filing jointly is 315,000. And I write all that, first of all, so it's descriptive, and also because you get used to writing that language, so it just flows off your tongue more easily. It becomes more familiar to you. Okay, I like to see my decimals in percentages because it's easier to read. But it's not 3%. That tried to round, so I'm going to add my um, decimal place so that you can see it was actually 2.5%. Okay? So QBI was 60, and then I need to put down here, well, I, I did put it here, take the lesser of QBI times 20% or the greater of the W-2 compared to the W-2 capital investment. So I compared this number and this number to get the greater of, and then I had to take the lesser of that number and the greater of those two. So I think that's written as clearly as I can come up with for this point, um, but it may be that you could actually, um, and I would want to do this probably, um, not required, but you could actually go up here and draw little arrows and then put a little greater than here and it could become even more clear to you. Okay, so initially I'm limited to 20,000 and notice that was right here. All right, and then, however, the taxable income is not exceeding 415, therefore I can use the formula and reduce my QBA by the difference in QBI times 20 and the W2 investment limitation. So, I compared these two and got the difference. So let me go ahead and put something there that makes it look like that. And then the formula is taxable income minus threshold divided by 100,000. And when I do that, I wanna have a formula because nobody knows that this little random thing down here was that, right? So I'm gonna actually copy that formula because it was a good one. I'm gonna put it right here where it belongs. All right, now I can delete this because it's no longer needed. You know, I like to see my things in percentage, but that's a preference. You can do whatever you like. And so then I apply my formula. So I'll say apply percentage to difference from above. That's when I actually applied it to the 60% to that difference that I got. That's not what I meant to do. It got click happy right there. Um, the difference to what I got right there. All right, and so when I do that, then I say my QBI deduction um, less my limited gives me my actual QBI deduction allowed. We'll call that allowed. And we could call this QBI deduction the initial QBI deduction because that or we'll call it tentative QBI deduction. But do you see how in doing this you sort of um, get better at the terminology and figure out how to make these distinctions that will help you understand it. All right and then finally I want to be um, put everything the same be consistent so I'm going to make that have a comma and take out my extra spots and then I'm going to make this fit on one page because you want everything to always be print ready. That's real important to me um, in case somebody wants to print it. So I will say print area, set print area. Then I will say fit to one page and I'll look and see what it's looking like. Make it bigger so I can see it. Um, so I could do some better spacing here and take out some. Gotta let it be larger on the page as well. And then here, really don't want it to be that big because it makes it harder to read. Um, and then you've got a choice here. It'll be a personal choice, but um, one thing that can help sometimes is to wrap that text so that it looks a little bit better. I don't want this to get too long, so I'm not gonna play for too much longer, but just some options to think about um, as you're doing this. Um, and then always do another print preview just to see what it's looking like. And there we have it. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.